A warm welcome to everybody out there listening and watching this uh, video about uh, choosing the right force sensor uh, that contains a direct comparison of piezoelectric force sensors and strain gauge force sensors. My name is Martin Betchart. I'm the product manager for generic force sensor at the Kister Group and I'm gonna uh, guide you through this presentation and hopefully uh, afterwards you're able to choose the right sensor for you. The goal of this presentation is to facilitate your decision which sensor you need for your purpose. So that's why we're gonna have a look at various physical aspects and compare the behavior of a piezoelectric sensor towards a strain gauge uh, sensor. We're gonna have a look at static measurement, accuracy, isolation, moving cables, temperature, measuring range, sensor specification, dimensions, frequency range, and so on. Um, if you wanna skip and see only the overview, you might go to the end of this presentation where you can see the solution of this matrix that you can see here. First, let me repeat the physical measuring principles of those two kind of sensors. First, the piezoelectric force sensors, they are based on a crystal or a quartz. A quartz contains a regular crystal lattice that you can see here on the left with certain atoms that are charged positive and negative. As soon as you apply force on this uh, lattice, you displace the atoms and as a result, you displace the charge as well. And you receive a charge on the surfaces of the crystal here, positive on the bottom and negative on top. This charge is not that easy to handle because it's very volatile. So the electronics uh, in the measuring chain here is of utmost importance and a little bit delicate. On the other side, you can see the strain gauge, the VMS, where the measuring principle is a little bit different. The sensor itself is basically just a resistance which change, it changes its resistance based on the deformation that is a result of the force. So as soon as you apply force, you deform the sensor and the resistance got changed. And this is what you measure at the end of the day. So on the, le on the left side, we have small deformation, but as a result of the force, we have charge. On the right hand side, strain gauge, we uh, measure basically the deformation. This has advantages and disadvantages like we're gonna see in a minute. First, static measurement. As I mentioned already before, piezoelectric principle um, is based on charge and this electrical charge is pretty volatile. And since there is no such thing like a perfect insulation, we lose a little bit of charge over time and that makes this kind of sensor not that suitable for static measurements like uh, you have for a balance, for example. On the other side, strain gauge, as we said, measures the deformation or is based on the deformation. And as soon as you apply a force or a weight to whatever object, um, this deformation stays the same as long as you don't change the force or the weight. So uh, here, a clear advantage for strain gauge. Do never try to build a balance with a piezoelectric sensor. Of course, there is a boundary where it's difficult to judge which one to take, uh, which, for which principle to decide, um, but we will see that later on where and how you judge uh, which principle you need for your purpose. Accuracy. A clear advantage for the strain gauge principle because strain gauge sensors are famous for the very high precision and the high accuracy classes that can be reached. 
an accuracy class of 0.1% is easily achievable by a strain gauge sensor while you struggle with a piezoelectrical sensor to reach the same accuracy class. That will be a real challenge for them. Reason behind it again is charge is just more difficult to handle than a simple resistance like you got in a strain gauge. Out of the same reason, uh, high insulation is demanded when we have a look at the cable and the other uh, parts of the measuring chain. We need high quality cables and connectors and a clean working environment when we handle piezoelectric sensors. On the other side, strain gauge sensors just need an ordinary copper wire because usually they treat 10 volts, 0 to 10 volts and uh, not more. Another aspect that is in favor for the strain gauge sensors is uh, the cables. When we have a look at the cable again, since we just need ordinary cables for a strain gauge sensor, there is uh, no special demands on it. While on the piezoelectric sensor, we have special cables with a high insulation and the cable movement can cause noise signals, meaning uh, you create a charge by moving and bending a cable. So this is an additional source of errors. A much discussed uh, topic is the temperature and the mechanical drift. A piezoelectric sensor is drifting slightly, very slightly, but still there is a drift why it is not uh, that good to use it for um, static measurements. You have always a little and a small drift depending on the quality of the equipment that you are using. But still, if we come to a uh, temperature drift, for example, uh, you just need temperature changes and you induce a certain amount of charge to it. That means a certain error. On the other side, uh, the strain gauge sensors, they are temperature compensated. And if you are in an environment that has a lot of temperature changes, temperature changes while you are measuring, you go in favor for a strain gauge sensor. After so many advantages of the strain gauge sensors, let's have a look at the piezoelectric sensor and its advantages. Because, uh, of course, you need to have some advantages there, because otherwise nobody will build a piezoelectric sensor. One of the most dominant uh, positive aspects of a piezoelectric sensor is the extremely wide measuring range of up to six decades. That means even if you buy a sensor with one mega newton, your resolution and your accuracy stays the same. That means you can measure uh, pretty in pretty low ranges uh, with a high load. On the if you buy a strain gauge on the other side, you need to change the design of this sensor. Uh, the useful measuring range of a sensor, of a DMS sensor, is 30 to 100 percent of nominal value, meaning your resolution is much lower when you buy a too big sensor to measure a low force. That leads to sensor specifications that are in favor for the piezoelectric sensor as well. As mentioned before, the sensitivity, the threshold and the resolution are not depending on the sensor measuring range or the sensor size. Of course, if you use a too small sensor for a high force, you might damage it, but not the other way around. You can measure with a huge sensor a very small force. Strain gauges need to be adapted in dimensions as soon as they measure bigger or smaller forces. To make an example of this big measuring range and uh, high resolution, let's take a locomotive uh, of 20 ton per axle. This locomotive is measurable with the Kistler 9071A, a one component piezo force sensor, one of the bigger ones, but still not the biggest one. So you put the locomotive on this sensor, you measure the 20 tons, so uh, you got a quite huge uh, measuring window on your charge amplifier. And as soon as the locomotive is stable on that, uh, you reset the charge amplifier and zoom in and make the measuring window much smaller in order to uh, measure small changes in weight. Now you give the uh, locomotive driver a chewing gum and as soon 
and as soon as he decides to spit it out of the window you can easily and immediately see it on uh, the output of the sensor and just to remind you we're talking about 0.1 newton that is measurable with a sensor that has a nominal range of 400 kilo newton something which is just not feasible with a strain gauge sensor where you just see the noise and nothing else piezo force sensors are very compact built as you can see here as a comparison for two sensors which measure the same amount of force the piezo sensor is three to six times less big than the one you need uh, with the strain gauge measuring principle measuring a force with a strain gauge sensor means measurement of a deformation of an object that means the more displacement you have the better the measurement is this leads to pretty soft sensors as such with a low nominal frequency so if you want to measure a high frequency event then you go for a piezoelectric sensor because there the sensor is pretty rigid and virtually displacement free for measurement as a result again the piezoelectric sensor is applicable for dynamic and up to quasi-static measurements but most of the time it's used for dynamic events because it's very fast with a high natural frequency of the sensor itself and the stiff uh, structure of the sensor a strain gauge is applicable for quasi-static uh, measurements up up to absolutely static measurements like we had before balances uh, and so on piezo sensors have a huge safety margin they are able to recover from an overload of 20% up to sometimes 50% for a short time with no damage at all as mentioned before uh, piezo sensors are free of fatigue because they have not much deformation while measuring uh, a, uh, an effect or a setup so we have Kister sensors out there in the field that are more than 30 years old and have seen more than 15 million measuring cycles they come in for recalibration and we can see no deterioration of their uh, behavior at all now to a little bit to a uh, more difficult topic what you can see here is the wide operating temperature range for a piezo sensor which is given here uh, minus 40 degrees celsius up to 200 to be honest we already tested some sensors at minus 196 uh, degrees celsius and it's working just perfect but there is one thing that has to be mentioned the sensor itself during the measurement cycle has to have a stable uh, temperature environment otherwise you will see some drift that we uh, mentioned already before and above so if you want to measure at the high temperature a very low temperature uh, it's much better to go for a piezoelectric sensor than a strain gauge but only if the temperature is stable otherwise uh, you go for a temperature compensated uh, strain gauge sensor if you have more than one sensor out of whatever reason maybe you have a look at another webinar that is online at Kistler to see uh, what this is used for but if you have to sum uh, the signal of various uh, sensors then it is easily uh, done with the piezoelectric sensor because uh, you just electrically connect the signals and they add up because uh, we are talking about charge and charge is easy addable and as a last point the reset operate means uh, this is an advantage for a piezoelectric sensor because you can load the sensor uh, as we said seen before you put the locomotive on it and you reset it to zero and then wait for the um, locomotive driver to spit out his uh, chewing gum and you can easily see it because for the 
preload that you give here, uh, you need a high measuring range, so you set the measuring range pretty wide in your uh, charge amplifier. You reset and then you go into a very, very narrow window of uh, measurement and then you can see the slightest signals and the slightest events that are happening on your sensor. So that brings me to the end of this presentation with the overview you've seen uh, at the beginning of the presentation with all the aspects that I went through and explained briefly and shortly. Uh, now you can see on the right hand side in the two columns where the piezo sensor has advantage and where is it is better to go for a strain gauge sensor. It is a little bit misleading uh, that you have so many green thumbs up on the left hand side and just a few of them on the right hand side. But if you have a look out there in the world, most of the measurements are performed with strain gauge sensors. The most obvious reason I did not mention here in the in these slides is the price. Strain gauge is easy to handle, simple, built and pretty straightforward to use. So that is the reason why most of the people are using strain gauge. But the piezo sensor as a niche product has certain application where you just have no alternative than to go for uh, such a sensor even though it is a little bit more costly and is more difficult to handle and, uh, and, and treat. So thanks for watching. I hope you're a little bit closer to your decision which sensor you need now. Uh, if you need some further and more information, please visit us on uh, www.kistler.com force where you can see loads of uh, more information or just drop us an email with your questions and we get back to you. Thank you and enjoy.